and we're back with Superintendent Hoffmeister. I got to tell you, it, it's first of all, it's so good to have you here and to see that your attitude is up and bright and cheerful. Thank I don't you. know how you do it. Uh, you. I, everybody out there is wringing their hands. Everybody from prisons to the Department of Transportation to everybody else. And it takes, it takes a good attitude to approach this problem which I don't have a good attitude about it. I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm gonna get up with britches are all, you know. I, but I'm, I'm starting to hear things like the, I think a fellow in Sand Springs, superintendent over there said, if this tax break that was signed into law goes, you know, goes into to effect, then he, it would be nice if folks who get money back from the state or save money on their taxes could turn around and donate that to education. Is that a wasted effort? You know, I think anytime you're giving back, it's never wasted, regardless the size of that gift. Um, I think there's a symbolic gesture that folks want to make certain that they are supporting uh, what they believe is a critically important part of, of our state, and that's the education of our youth. Uh, so I appreciate that. And I think we have seen a great interest across the state uh, in the business community, the philanthropic community, school people, uh, businesses and uh, those who own them on Main Street USA, you know, all appreciating the fact that we are in a very challenging time. And it's and, and I have to thank the legislature last year. They kept us flat. I wanted a teacher pay increase. I'm still coming back talking about our teacher shortage and and I will I will vigorously um, argue that we must be competitive regionally mm -hmm. or we're not going to be able to have the most important person in the schoolhouse according to research that's the teacher every child deserves a teacher in their classroom we are um, having a teacher shortage of historic proportion and we've got to solve this and that's what we must really solve in terms of a mm -hmm. dedicated or long-term solution, uh, not one-time money, uh, not doing something at the legislative level that is um, a, a, a nod to uh, a problem, but, but a real solution. And it's not going to happen overnight. How it's going are we going to get the raises? Where, where's that money going to come from? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm challenging legislators to find. Uh, we're proposing uh, that they look at some of the funds that are cost, you know, uh, excuse me, um, um, uh, constant, you know, uh, expenses that we have, whether that might be health care, let's mm -hmm. find, uh, let's examine, are we, are we providing health care insurance in the most um, e effective way, or is it the most efficient way mm -hmm. of going about mm -hmm. that? Uh, but, but there is a reality here that we, we must um, grow with uh, the growth in population. We're a growing state. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to add students each year. This year, we've grown by 4,370 students over last year, yet the dollars are not keeping up. In fact, it's close to almost 50 thousand students since 2008 yeah. um, and the dollars have remained flat. What has gone up is the cost of health care and any dollars that have been added to the pre-k through 12th grade budget uh, in education have had to go to um, support the fixed cost, the legislative responsibility of paying for health care for teachers. You know, on top of all this, and I know you have a good relationship with the governor. I'm not, I'm not trying to make waves here, but it's, it's one of those things where, please don't get political on me. I won't get political on you, but okay. I'll just throw this out. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are questioning why the governor first supported and then said, no, I changed my mind. I'm not going to take the money from the government on health care when it would have relieved health care problems from border to border, yours included. Uh, it's one of those questions that I guess I'll carry to my grave. I cannot figure it out other than it's simple politics. But if we don't attack this thing at the very core of the problem, teacher shortages, uh, pay them uh, you know, a, an honest wage, mm -hmm. or it's look out Mississippi, we're taking over the last slot. This is not going to play. Yeah. Well, what I can tell you is that the governor has made commitments to 
um, really solve the teacher shortage and wants to provide a way to give teachers a pay increase that is meaningful, one that would provide for a competitive wage with those states around us. We are not competitive right now. And in order to do this, we're going to have to have a plan and we've been meeting with members of her cabinet to try to solve that. Uh, I'm not sure what that answer is going to be. And that's yeah. what the legislative process is for. The session uh, lasts a number of months so that we can work these out, these details out with those stakeholders at the table that will be affected. And that's, we'll be right in the middle of that. You know, you're way too young to remember this. But when I was a pup, when Dwight Eisenhower was president, we practiced a thing called duck and cover because there was a veiled threat out there that we could be under the button for a nuclear attack. So all the kids in school had to learn to get under their desks, you know, and, and cover. I just wonder, do the lawmakers over there duck and cover when they see you coming? <laughs> you know what? I we we work together, Do you? and I think it is important. So to, you don't have to, anybody dodging you yet. No, no, no. You know we all want what's best for kids, um, and and this is the part of my job that uh, is the easy part. We all have that in common. There are a lot of ideas on how we do this, and I appreciate that. Um, and and I also appreciate that. Each area of the state is a little different. The needs are a little bit different. We shouldn't have a one-size-fits-all approach. We need to respect the local voice of how funds can be best used to serve students. Um, I, I have, I do have a sense of optimism, and I think that that really is um, uh, rests in my my trust of. of of the individuals that make up this state. Well, I know um, when you were first elected, uh, and I don't, I'm not accusing you of being naive. Don't, please don't misunderstand me. But you were so excited and so pumped and let's get this done. <clears throat> a couple of days or a couple of weeks later, I saw you on a video clip at one of the local stations and you look like somebody hit you in the back of the head with a wet squirrel. And it was like, I thought, okay, they've unleashed it. Now she sees all the problems. And so help me, hand to God, six weeks later, you look like you look just now, right now. I mean, okay. fresh and perky, and it was like, okay, I can do this. I can make this work. A lot of folks have put a lot of hopes. Sure. They've pinned them to your shoulders. Sure. Are you ready to deal with that? I want to, and I will. Um, it, we have too much at stake. Uh, our kids are counting on us to get this right. I have heard many conversations with those people that will be making budget decisions. I don't envy the hard work and decisions they're going to have to make, but we will stand ready to provide whatever information is needed um, and strong advocacy uh, for our kids. This is about results for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not see anything different until we do something different. It's going to take a better plan and it's going to take the resources to achieve that. And so this is something that includes teachers. We've got to solve the teacher shortage, and that's where I'm going to stay right in the same place I was when I took office, which is that's got to be priority number one. And, um, and then I think we, we have um, uh, a look at standards. We're about to um, bring the new set of standards for math and English language arts to the legislature. Uh, when I took office, that was the very first task we were set to do with the repeal of Common Core, and we have been working um, tirelessly to do that with hundreds of Oklahoma. We've got about 30 seconds. This has gone by way too quickly. 30 seconds of what are you most proud at this point? I'm most proud of the change in culture. Uh, we have a more collaborative culture across the state. We have advisory groups, about 20, that are meeting that are beyond the typical advisory groups of principals and teachers and uh, school leaders that has extended to the business community, the philanthropic community. We have students coming to the Capitol tomorrow for our very first student advisory group. And then I think the other big piece is we are giving the ACT to all juniors this year. I remember you, how you felt about that going in. We're out of time. I really wanted to get into the hunger element for children too because we have so many that are coming to school hungry. We'll do that next time around. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Appreciate you I coming appreciate in it. and we'll see you maybe six, eight months from now? I would love that. You're on. That's all the time we have for this edition of Perspectives. I'm Sam Jones. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. You make my job easy. Oh, well, good. Thank you.